tenacious full court pressure. And you'll see right here, John Gwynn's first job on this press is to make the ball handler pick up his dribble before he attacks. Contain the dribble. You'll see, he contains him right here. Now, Perella is going to move in to get ready for the double team. Chris Smith jumps over to make sure there's no pass back to the middle. Gwen's job is done. All of a sudden, you can see the offensive player thinking, well, that's over with. But it isn't, because right back comes the press again. Smith, Gwen, and Burrell with a triple team this time. And just as they do, Rod Sellers is going to step up into the passing lane and cut off the passing attempt to the inside. As he does, Lyman DeFries comes over, picks up the loose ball, another turnover for Connecticut. How about Christian Laker? He does it all for two, leads him in points, rebounds, block shots, and steals. One of the most versatile players in the country can step outside and go one on one. Now here's a clear out for him. AC Earl from Iowa, totally defenseless to stop Leitner, as was Shaquille O'Neal in that great regular season game that Leitner had against O'Neal from LSU. So look for the clear outs for the great Christian Leitner. Starting lineups for UConn. Scott Burrell, Tarana Walker, Rod Sellers, Steve Peichel, and Chris Smith, the leading scorer. For Duke, the freshman Grant Hill, along with senior Greg Kubek, Christian Leitner, Bobby Hurley, and Thomas Hill. To get to this point, UConn smashed LSU in round one by 17, then came back and eliminated Xavier with a 16-point victory. And for Duke, Northeast Louisiana fell to him by 29 in the opening round. And then Iowa was eliminated by 15. Both of these teams played in the Minneapolis region. The officials tonight, Jim Bain from Batoon, Illinois, Tom O'Neill from Tinley Park, Illinois, and Dave Hall, Lakewood, Colorado. We're ready to tip the rematch, Duke and Connecticut. Leitner and Sellers will jump. Duke in the white uniforms, the better seed, the two seed. UConn, the 11 seed in the Midwest. It's controlled by Duke and Bobby Hurley to start. Sellers on Leitner on the inside, playing the low post. Leitner, they get it inside to Leitner right away. Left-handed right off the glass. Went right over the top of Sellers. Now, Leitner does not like to play the low post all the time, but certainly can do it effectively. And that 6'11 has a big advantage in there size-wise. Great man by Duke. Walker driving and scoring for Connecticut. Tarana Walker. Tough shot. Gliding to the left and not using the board. Here comes the press. Thomas Hill comes over and helps out. He's double-teamed. Back over to Hurley. In the corner, Leitner. Jumper. Kubek, great offensive rebound. Foul on the way up. Score it and a foul. Surprisingly there, Kubek battling what is normally a very tough team on the weak side, Connecticut, for the rebound. Kubek, a senior who has a chance to become, along with teammate Buckley, the first guys ever to play in four final fours in their career. Can you imagine? Unbelievable. Particularly in this day and age. And when you've got to win four games to get there, the teams are seated. Kubek makes it 5-2-2. Two, two. Pressure of their own. Grant Hill, who has really picked things up now that he's completely healthy. Hill is on Burrell. Burrell driving, foul outside, called on Grant Hill. Very significant call there in my mind, Jim. And in the respect, the first game we saw a lot of hand checking. In this game, and you can see Mike Krzyzewski talking to the official right away, that was a touch call for this early in the game. Sending the message, however, That's right. to these teams. Sure, if they're going to call it that way, then you've got to change your philosophy as to how you're guarding people. Michael stopped his dribble, now looking for help. He gets Rod Sellers, the center, out high. And you can't start your offense that far away from the basket, so Michael does the right thing, moving inside. Three-pointer, push off. Push off called against Lorena Walker. Now the, oh, they called it on Kubek. Well, the official signified Kubek, but looked pointed as if he was going in the other direction, but he called it correctly. Kubek definitely pushed off inside. Now, with Kubek in the lineup, this becomes a relatively small team for Duke. Starting whereas usually it's been Brian Davis. A 
although they've used numerous starting lineups this year. Here's Walker missing it, oh, following it up. How about Walker with the start here? He's got all four of Connecticut's points. Looked like he had glue on his hands the way he picked up that offensive rebound. Now you notice Connecticut is not pressing full court. They dropped it back to about half-court situation. Thomas Hill is open as they swing it around. Three-pointer is good. Jim, when we first saw this guy, Thomas Hill, this year, out at Oklahoma, and he won the MVP. Everybody said he's a nice player. As this season has continued to progress, he has become an outstanding player. And he's only a sophomore. And he's a star category now. The Smith driving, then bounce pass to Morrell, puts oh. it up high on the baseline. Rebound by Kubek, who's been very aggressive on the boards early. Curley finds an open man. Grant Hill, but he'll bring it back out. Hill again, three-pointer. Oh, he really didn't even have that one well seated in his hand on the release. Curley's a really tough, hard-nosed defender in the backcourt. Caused a lot of trouble for a dribbler. In the lane, knocked away by Thomas Hill. Thomas Hill starts the race now for Duke. Here's Kubek coming in on the wing, short on the layup. Nice job by Pico on the defense. Sellers travel before he put it on the floor. And there you have it. Good job by the officials here. They're getting this game under control right away. Sellers threw the ball back up in the Leitner's face, kind of gently. Leitner wanted to push him in the chest a little bit. Jim Calhoun, last year's National Coach of the Year. In fact, won our CBS Coach of the Year. It was the last time we saw him. He didn't last long in the Big East opening round. Was ejected from the game. Grant Hill working for the shot. He'll bypass it. Give it to Kubek for a three. Duke has made three threes already. Yeah, if I'm Jim Calhoun, though, that doesn't concern me. This is not Duke's game to be beaten you from the three-point line. Very unusual, particularly early on. Holy would give him all kinds of trouble if he picks up his dribble. Lorena Walker in the corner. Chris Smith, three-pointer. He answers back. Played for Coach K on the U.S. team that Chris Smith over the summer in the Goodwill Games and the World Games as the starting guard on the team along with Kenny Anderson. And Hill, excellent penetrator with the ball. Corrina Walker on him. Thomas Hill posting up on Michael in and out, but he'll shoot two. Michael got caught on the switch that time. Hill can play right over it. Gwynn, the super sub for the Huskies, comes in, replacing Michael. Mike Krzyzewski is going to counter with Davis, so he's going to get bigger as Connecticut gets smaller. You know, as you look at Gwynn, uh, there's another guy that plays up in this area called you know, Benny Johnson. They used to call him Microwave. Still do. And John Gwynn's basically the same way. And when he comes in and he's hot, he gives a dimension to this Connecticut team that when they're playing well, he's playing well. Thomas Hill. Documented before, he comes from a very athletic family. There's John Gwynn. Thomas Hill's father was an Olympic bronze medalist in 1972 for the United States in the high hurdles. For eight points for Thomas Hill, and Duke has the nine point lead at the start. Jim Nance and Billy Packer, Andrea Joyce is with us as well. The Midwest Regional Semifinal. The winner will play St. John Sunday for the right to go to the Final Four. the defense UConn has applied in its last 10 games, Billy, although we've seen Duke shooting it quite well here early. Well, Duke shooting the ball, of course, from the outside in the perimeter, but Connecticut holding teams down below that uh, magic 40% mark. Only Pittsburgh has shot over 40 against them in that stretch. In the last 10 games, that's amazing. Only one. Over 40. And they shot 43. So it's not like they were burning it up. All right, Chris Smith stops his dribble. Hurley's on him. It's helped from John Gwynn. 15 on the shot clock. 
Good solid screen that time by Trina Walker. Great help by Grant Hill. Smith may have been hit with the body. They call it on Hill. Chris Smith has that NBA move that he makes when he's being guarded and drives to the basket. He puts his body into the defender and then glides away. And when he does, and Pat O'Brien and Mike Francesa in New York as politely as we can. Let's interrupt and keep our eye on this game and bring you up to date on what's going out out in the Meadowlands, Temple, Oklahoma State. The Owls have jumped up to a 25-19 lead, uh, Mike White. Pat, uh, they've been very patient on offense and they've hit nine of their first 15 shots. Mark making off very quickly. Three or four has nine points. And their 2-3 matchup zone has really given Oklahoma State a lot of problems. They've had trouble getting the ball inside the Houston, which is their key guy. They've bottled him up. John Potter's has given him some some production from the perimeter, 10 points early, but they've just controlled the tempo, been patient, and played well on both ends so far. And we look for Mark Macon to try to prove something today. After 1988, he went, what, 6 for 29, I think, against Duke, a highly touted freshman. Didn't do well in that game. Regional final against Duke, shot 6 of 29, the nightmare game of his career. Highly touted as a freshman on a very good Temple team. Now as a senior, he returns there looking for a little vindication. 6.29 left in the half of this game. We'll keep you up to date on that. 25-19 tempo. Let's go back out to the Midwest now. And Jim Nance and Billy Packer, UConn Duke. Tell us. Eight points for Thomas Hill of Duke. And the Blue Devils with a nine-point lead. Lyman DePree shoots it inside the Burrell. Great pass by DePree right through Davis's hands. You don't expect that from DePree. We expect him to give you some great minutes on this end of the court, the defensive end. A great assist by the Priest and the Huskies over within seven. You notice how Jim Calhoun has pulled the press off. Laker directly under the goal. Oh, and Davis did. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know if he touched it. They say he did. Offensive goaltending. This call. Job goes up. Leitner's got it. We won't be able to tell from this angle. Yep, I think he got a piece. Oh, he did. He yep, touched it. He got a piece. No basket. Wind coming from out underneath the pack. Burrell from the corner. Boy, he wills him in. That was a two for Burrell. 14 minutes to go in the first half. Duke with a five-point lead. Connecticut getting excellent screens down and low to three up jump shooters. Solid screen, good heads that time by Sellers. Thomas Hill lost the dribble, picked up by Chris Smith. Smith pulls up over Hurley, too strong. Sellers underneath, Sellers with the left hand. And Leitner never crossed half court that time. Duke with a small team on the court, getting beat on the boards. This is an odd combination Duke has out there right now. Six unanswered for the Huskies. Bounce pass inside, Thomas Hill. Stripped away by Lyman DePriest. Connecticut's toughness taken over here early, Jim. But here's McCaffrey. Almost gets it back for Duke. UConn on a run. A three would tie it. Nobody has a better and quicker crossover dribble down in low than Chris Smith. Well, he can put it between his legs, and he does it effectively. It's not for show. Kick by Leitner, and UConn will inbound. Kubek returns to the lineup for Thomas Hill, and Crawford Palmer comes in for Leitner. Mike Krzyzewski going to that bench often and early, and still in there with a very small team. Burrell took step. Uh, the priest wanted to put the body on Kubek. John Gwynn. Likes to go to his left. left. Yep, that's his shot. Yeah. That's it to one. And you notice what Connecticut is not pressing full court even after made shots. They're playing a half court defense and making Duke get baskets on the half court as opposed to get scoring off fast breaks against the press. Nice move by Jim Calhoun early in this game. They swing it around to the left. Now Hurley. Calhoun does not think Duke is a great shooting club. Kubek. a three. See if McCaffrey plays Gwynn to go left. He didn't. Gave him an opening. Three-pointer Burrell. Rosen rope. Picked up by McCaffrey. 
But the way Connecticut's playing, Jim, they're not allowing Duke to fast break. See how quickly they get back on defensive transition? Not giving any openings for the fine finishers that Duke has. Dan Sarulik will be checking in on the next dead ball situation. Hurley takes one. How about the three-point shooting for the Blue Devils? Bobby Hurley was looking to hit into the low post. Took that shot as an accident. They are five for six in three-pointers. And Duke goes zone for the first time in this game. Five for six and five in a row. The priest is wide open. Nobody sees him yet. Now Burrell does. Sellers intercepts it. That may have been going to the priest, but Sellers picked it off and scored. Boy, that zone had some holes in it, didn't it, Jim? We had a perfect angle from where we were sitting. The priest was open for about eight seconds. And now Connecticut goes zone. Kubek, another three-pointer. Stops the streak at five. And made five threes in a row of the Duke team. Now Quinn going to his left. Gives up to Burrell. To two. Davis with the forceful rebound. Hurley went in the break. Oh, he got it. Oh, a big mistake by Scott Burrell. He actually screamed Scott off so that he couldn't get to... I mean, Quinn off so that he couldn't get to Hurley. Oh, a steal by Brian Davis. Good hustle by Scott Burrell because he cut off the passing lane back to Hurley. Midway point of the first half for the Blue Devils with a seven-point lead. Tomorrow we will present to you the Division II Championship game. That's at 2 o'clock Eastern time. And the semifinals, well, Northern Alabama. North Alabama advances. Bridgeport in a tie game in the second half. That's Bridgeport, Connecticut, the home of Chris Smith, now on the dribble. And that Cal State Bakersfield won a ball game in which they got out-rebounded by 20 and 20 turnovers and still won by three. Traveling called on UConn. If you look at that Bridgeport score, you know there was an NBA player played at Bridgeport, Billy. You get it? You know it? No. Manute Bowl. Is that right? Manute Bowl. I don't know <laughs> if he's an NBA player. <laughs> That's a reach. So a giant reach. There's a late goal. You know, Connecticut has really shut Duke down in half-court offense with exception of one thing, Jim. Three-point shots. Davis knocks it out of bounds. So Duke is not really getting any offense going at all in terms of their, their normal half-court offensive flow. With a little lead there. Burrell to Smith. Waves off Burrell with a little fake. Swings it around and up. 24-19. And it goes back to the zone. 1-3-1. One, one. Cyrillic in the middle. Jim Calhoun changing his defenses around a lot today. Kubek open for his three. And Caffrey throws it. McCaffrey, they've got some fellas to take some threes. McCaffrey, Kubek on the wings. Hurley can make it out front. And that's how they're going to have to attack the zone. Sarulik underneath. Laker's on him. Sarulik wanting some help. He gets it to the priest. Push off by Smith to get the ball. Money on the shot clock. Smith will take it to the hole. And offensive foul called on Connecticut. Called on Chris Smith. Looked like a pretty good play to me, Jim. The way he went ahead and handled himself and that, on the step through and then up for the shot. Yep, and an incredulous glare to the officials from Smith. Nine minutes left in the half, a Duke five-point lead. The winner will play St. John's for the Midwest final in the Midwest championship game Sunday. Oh, Lyman DePriest reached in. They called him for it. Low-scoring game strategy is reigned supreme here by this man, Jim Calhoun. Even though he's behind, he has to be happy with the way his team is stymieing Duke on the half court. Grant Hill steps to the hole. Good. Scott Burrell, forceful rebound. Here comes UConn on the run. Win survey. Dumps it inside and slips away. DePriest had it blocked. 
and Gwynn was on the line. Duke basketball. There's a case where three referees is the only way this game can be called. The official was right on the end line to see that play. Now the defense shows a 2-3 look. McCaffrey on the outside. He is fouled as McCaffrey trying a pretty good act, too. Fouled by Burrell on the jumper. First on Burrell, the fifth on UConn. And Billy McCaffrey will be at the line. By the way, in Southeast Regional Final tomorrow, you'll see. 440 Eastern Time tip Arkansas and Kansas in that final. That'll be followed by the West Final, UNLV against Seton Hall. How about the run of the Pirates? Late underneath off the inbounds play, and a foul on Cerulek. Jim against the man-to-man -man out of bounds. Cerulek got picked. Christian Leitner just took it to the hoop on him. That's a play that'll drive any coach crazy to allow anyone to score a layup on the inbounds pass. Well, it, it's so tough when you play that man-to-man -man on that out-of-bounds situation. It's kind of interesting, too, because Calhoun has been playing zone half-court, and then they go man-to-man -man on the inbounds play. Rod Sellers in for Cerulek. Now the UConn killer of a year ago, Leitner, makes it a three-point play. You know, not only did he hit the shot last year, but he was seven of eight from the floor in that game, Leitner, and had 23 points. He's got five so far in this one. Hill playing. You can see how he's shading Gwynn, not letting him go to his left. Scouting report for Duke coming in play there. A hold called on Hill and Billy. That will be three now on Grant Hill. Well, you can see, and as I said, at the very first call of the game, Jim, hand checking was going to be called in this game. Now, Hill, just a freshman, has got to go ahead and adjust to the officiating. Mike Krzyzewski realized it was a foul. It's been consistently called. Brian Davis has checked in for Grant Hill. There's a timeout on the court. Duke continues the lead. Connecticut 19. Jim, a very unusual flow to this game. As you can see, you know, Connecticut did not press. That threw Duke off stride a little bit. And the half-court offense, neither team able to score that well. Thomas Hill blocks the shot of Chris Smith. Huskies get it back. Sellers in the lane. Pump fake. Left-handed. No good. Nice job by Davis. Hurley fighting for it. Keichel picks it up. And Walker walks. Connecticut really having a hard time scoring in their half court. You've got to figure, with the exception of Chris Smith, nobody that's on the floor right now really generates half court offense by himself. Bounce pass in the late, or gets away from it. There's the priest to pick it up. But their offense is their defense. And Smith comes up short on the fadeaway. It was so effective for the Huskies in the first two games. Scoring off the turnovers. Leitner just crossing half court now. Taking a little rest. Seven minutes left in the first half. Really sloughing off Davis is the priest trying to help out on Leitner inside. Leitner now posting up on Sellers. Gets some help from the priest. Gets the shot off the glass. Wow. Brilliant shot because he was double, he was double in, almost triple teamed on the play. Seven for Leitner. Ten point lead. Leitner with a steal at the other end. Curly could see Davis breaking early, and he wanted to get it to him. Well, there's one where Mike Krzyzewski said, how about the hand check on that play going in the other direction? They're going to give Sellers that shot. Called against Peichel. Peichel pushing off. And that's his second team foul, number seven. Well, Jim, you can see the frustration coming from Jim Calhoun. He's got to find somebody to score. Michael only averaging about two a game. Sits down as the three, so he, he gives up some defense there, but he's got to bring Gwynn back into the game to go ahead and get some shooting. Calhoun, five and one in the NCAA since he uh, joined the team at 90 and 91. 
had two rough years when he first came to Connecticut, but those great years at Northeastern where he took three straight teams to the NCAA. So, Wally Coach. One and one, front end hit by Brian Davis. Well, for the audience just joining us, Duke with its largest lead of the night. And that makes it 12 as Brian Davis makes two free throws. 31-19 Blue Devils. Yeah, and if you're Duke, this is the man right here that you've got to slow down now because he's going to feel the pressure that he's got to put up some shots. Talking about Chris Smith. Good solid screen by Walker and a good help by Kubek. When wow, that's it away from him. They say it was touched off the Duke player. So the Huskies will inbound it. So far in this game, Duke's uh, field goal percentage near 60%. Very strange, Jim, as you pointed out early. 12 games holding Keene all but one under 40. Five out of seven from three-point land, the Blue Devils. This is UConn on the attack. Scott Burrell with the jumper. Back of the rim. Duke did not get the break going because Connecticut getting back so well. Three-pointer by Kubek. Offensive rebound by Davis. He goes up with it and draws the foul against Torreno Walker. His first team foul number eight. St. John's won earlier tonight, 91-74. As Robert Wardan had a career-high 21 points in the victory for the Redmen. St. John's against either UConn or Duke. And what's interesting about that, they, of course, played UConn twice during league play, beat UConn on two occasions, did St. John's. And last year in the tournament, St. John's and Duke met in the second round. Jim, what is it, 22-4 St. John's against UConn since they joined the Big East? All time, yeah. Yep, amazing. Fun, man. Funny in that league how certain teams have matched up over the years very well with others. This is Duke's eighth free-throw attempt. And UConn has not been to the line so far in this game. They're on a drought. And again, you got to figure that Chris Smith is feeling he's got to put up some shots here. Look at Crawford Palmer denying Rod Severs. Now Quinn. And Quinn being forced to his right all the time. Burrell down the baseline. Here's Smith. This UConn team cannot find an opening. Now pass almost stolen away. Reyna Walker in a reach-in called against Crawford Palmer. Pretty good job defensively from the weak side by Duke. A good recovery by Walker. Already tonight, North Carolina, a 26-point win. St. John's by 17. Temple leads at the half by six. Cerulek returns for Sellers. Sellers had given this team a punch in its first two games, but not so far tonight. Well, it's interesting how this team started out this year, 12 and one, really on a roll, and then all of a sudden they dropped six straight Big East games, but then came back very well at the end of the year. Yeah, to, to win six out of seven, and now two straight in the NCAAs. Torreno Walker had one of his best games of his career in last year's game against Duke. And Walker scored nine in that game. And as we know, this is not a good free throw shooting team, 62%. They go back to their 1-3-1, one, one, and Calhoun continually changes defense. Brian Davis gets it out to Hurley. Three-pointer swish. I have never seen Duke shoot this well by so many different people in the three-point line. Six out of nine. Hurley has two of them. 15-point lead. Walker on the drive. Offensive. Bryford Palmer held his position. He sure did, Jim. Excellent play by Palmer, because had he gone to block this shot, he'd have been in trouble. And look how he established his position. Stays right in there very well on Walker, who was too late to pull up. These are two very tough mental teams right here. Now you see Jim Calhoun changing defense again, this time picking up a little higher in straight man-to-man. Hill back out to Hurley. 4.30 left in the half. Thomas Hill. And a foul call. Score the basket. Second time Sellers has gotten there a little bit too late. A great play.
play by Kubek as he penetrated the seam and dumped on back outside. You can see Kubek right here, the jump stop with a penetration, created everybody to go ahead back inside, and then goes the jump shot, and Hill hits again. He's having a big first half. Second foul on Burrell. Yeah, Hill already has 10 points, Billy. You're right. Started out with a couple of quick threes. You know, it's amazing when guys are recruited. And Mike Krzyzewski certainly has his share of big-name recruits. Thomas Hill's name was added to the list, and nobody even blinked. It's because they already had uh, Bobby Hurley. That's right. Coming in. Well, here you have Duke for the first time using a little zone trap of their own. Oh, almost got away from Gwynn. Chris Smith with a shield, missing the three, and over the back of Brian Davis. Shows you what kind of leaping ability and quickness he has, went right over the Cirilla. And Jim, there was the shot that I would never take at this gym. The 45 degree angle into that bank of lights up there. It is not a good shot to shoot. I haven't seen anybody hit one there tonight. From this side of the court. Exactly. Yep. You shoot right into him. McCaffrey and Antonio Lang come in for Duke. Lang, an excellent game. Duke's win a week ago. Nice block. What Thomas Hill was way up to almost steal it. UConn has missed its last seven. Wow. Oh, <laughs> and he was going there. Yep. Well, and he, was, he was going to his <laughs> left. So maybe he wasn't looking into the lights. <laughs> Gets it back to Crawford Palmer. Step to the basket. Oh, how about that, Crawford Palmer? Uh, just as we saw St. John's get great help off the bench, not by a lot of minutes, but from the standpoint of quality play, so is Duke. 17-point lead for the Blue Devils. Burrell oh, intercepted the pass to Cirilli. Quinn going to his right this time. Way off balance shot. Chance for a fast break here. Three minutes left in the first half. Duke in control. 17-point advantage. Looking for more. Mike Krzyzewski getting a chance to rest some of his starters here. Antonio Lang. Burrell. And this is offensive against Lang. First on Lang the seventh against Duke. Well, Jim, just as we saw down on the other end, Torino Walker make his commitment to go to the hoop so early and from so far out, as did Lang, and of course, that's an easy way to pick up the charge. All right, at Pontiac, Michigan, a timeout on the floor, 2.51 before the half. Duke dominating. Back in the Silverdome, Duke with the lead over UConn. You know, this week, Jim Calhoun has talked a lot about the importance of mental at this point in the season, so it's not surprising to see him using Lyman DePries, his resident tough guy, so much. This is really a homecoming for Lyman DePries. He uh, hasn't been home. He's from this area and hasn't played back here since high school. He's got a lot of family. His mom, Dolores, a lot of friends here. And believe me, Jim, a lot of folks in this audience tonight remembering Lyman DePries from his high school days. Jim? All right, Andrew. Thank you. And Lyman and UConn down 17 push off call the priest just outside of the Detroit area is his hometown Highland Park turned it over a moment ago Jim, for the DePriest family and for the Connecticut followers a little stat Duke certainly gonna lead at halftime in this game they are 26 and 0 on this year when they lead at halftime We just saw Mike Chusevsky has won 15 of his last 18 games at Duke in NCAA tournament play. He's now the winningest percentage coach in NCAA tournament. About 23 and 7 in his career in the tournament. Phenomenal. And there will be some that say yes, but he hasn't won the big one yet. Cyrillic off the back of the rim. Davis tried to make the break, and they'll bring it back out. Shaky ball handling by Duke. They've got a rested uh, early back into the game now. Traveling on Davis. Eighth turnover against Duke. Jim, I want to point out something in regard to Jim Calhoun. 
he made the decision not to go with his full court pressure, forcing Duke to play half court offense. Now, in doing so, I think he was very successful from that theory in regard to stopping Duke from scoring. But what happened is that he is not scoring off his defense, which is normally a major portion of his offense. So he had trouble either way. Missing again. Sellers. And a tip in by Cerulli. Nice comeback here by Connecticut. 140 to go. Mike Krzyzewski wanted to make sure his team maintains this lead. Duke's had a couple of empty trips. Although not many on the night. Using some clock here. 20 on the show. 40 to 25 now. Duke leads Lakers. the University of Connecticut. We're going to keep an eye on this game and uh, get you up to date on what's going on in the Meadowlands. They have just begun the second half, Mike Francesa, 36-30. Temple over Oklahoma State. Pat, Oklahoma State trails by six, but the key for them in the second half, Byron Houston, their big guy inside, only got five shots in the first half. He scores 23 points a game, only at four in the first half. Oklahoma State has to consciously get him the ball early in the second half of this game. Temple playing that old Philadelphia zone. Harry Litwack would be proud of that, wouldn't he? Yep, they're playing their tough zone. They've stopped the ball inside, and Oklahoma State has hit some from the perimeter. But the key, they have to get Byron Houston the ball early and often. Halftime, we're going to go to that game. Let's go back out to the Midwest. In Pontiac, Jim Nansen, Billy Packer, 57 seconds left in the game. Duke leads 40 to 25. 57 seconds left in the first half. It's been Duke throughout. Christian Leitner at the line for the Blue Devils. He's shooting two. Two guys were 10 and two. Leitner, the number five scorer in the ACC, number one field goal shooting percentage, number seven foul shooting percentage, number four in steal, number five in blocks, number four in rebounds. Did you say that's a pretty good year? I'd say it's. Uh, called being near the top of many categories, huh? Last year led the ACC in free throw shooting. That's the last time you saw a 6'11 guy do that. Nine points for Leighton. The largest lead was 18 for Duke. It's now at 17. And now Duke with a chance when they get the ball back to hold it. So really quickly on the turnaround. Nails it. They hold it for the last shot now. They do not have to put it up. And Mike Krzyzewski off his feet making that signal that he wants one. Good time now for Connecticut. They really put up the pressure. Win went for the steal. Good idea. You know, you might as well go out there. You figure that they're not going to try to get the ball down inside. Duke has all five of their players above the foul line. Thomas Hill holding it. Bad place to pick up. All the time. Oh. All the time. Burned one with 18.6 seconds before the half. Now, Thomas Hill made that mistake by picking up his dribble. So. 18 seconds left in the half for UConn. They've had no success against the ACC this season. Lost to North Carolina in that Big East ACC challenge. That was at Chapel Hill. But and Jim, they've had some common opponents when you figure, you know, they were one and two against Georgetown. And Duke, of course, lost to Georgetown. They've had some others. Boston College, they were 2-0. and oh. Duke beat them. They were 1-0. and oh. North Carolina, the loss. And, of course, Duke was 2-1 and one against North Carolina. North Carolina State also played against exactly. UConn up at uh, Gamble Pavilion. And beat them. 60-59 to 59 in that one. Arkansas and Kansas tomorrow, 440 Eastern. And UNLV against Seton Hall. By the way, the last time to beat the Pirates, the last team to beat the Pirates, Billy, you know who it is? The last team to beat the Pirates of Seton Hall, the team that's on a roll. Blitz right through the Big East tournament. Now right into the regional final. North Carolina advanced to the East earlier tonight. We'll play the winner of that Oklahoma State Temple game. You're stalling for time. St. John's against <laughs> Ohio State earlier tonight. A 17-point smashing of the one seed by St. John's. Waiting for the winner of this one. Seton Hall's last loss was to Connecticut. All right. It was on February the 27th. How about Vegas's last loss in the NCAA? Last loss was to uh, Cal Santa. No, it was last year to New Mexico. No, no, no. In the NCAA. Oh, in the NCAA. Wait, I didn't answer the other questions. 40. How about Seton Hall? 1989 West Regional Final. How about UNLV's last loss? Last loss. I thought that's what you were asking me. Wasn't it Cal Santa Barbara? 
Yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> Would it be trivia night here? I'm telling you. Yeah, that was a big timeout by Hill. You don't want to waste one. 18 seconds to go, plus in the inbounds plate. Now they've, now they've got to go right into the score. Right from the backcourt. Hurley, Smith jumped down on him. Hurley now on the drive. In the hill, four-footer. From the final, on the follow, in the final three seconds of the half. Smith will just launch it. the end of the first half with the score. Duke 44, Connecticut 27. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Semifinal Game is sponsored by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. Canon, so advanced it's the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. And by UPS, now offering 10.30 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. Thomas Hill and Greg Kubak each have 11 points. Uh, Duke leads Connecticut 44 to 27. And hello again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Mike Francesa. Hope you're enjoying your Friday in basketball here at CBS. Hope somebody's bringing you food somewhere. I'm getting kind of hungry here. Let's send you out to the Meadowlands right now and get you up to date on Temple, Oklahoma State. And a fresh 45 for the Oklahoma State Cowboys who trail Temple 38-30, 14-43 left in the game. And Corey Williams with his fourth three-point shot of the game. Curry Kirkpatrick, Bill Raffery, and James Brown joining you courtside here at the Meadowlands for game two of this East Regional Semifinal between Temple and Oklahoma State. And Corey Williams, known as the Terminator, twice now has let Macon have the basketball. Bill and Alexander have done a nice job. Mark Macon on the drive. Left-handed hook in and out. And on the swipe, Byron Houston, James. Smacking Mark Strickland. And Temple shooting higher than normal for the season. Only 43% on the season. And OSU Corey Williams comes off the bench and has been hitting him from three-point range. Mark making 13 points, three steals, no free throws yet for the Cowboys. And Oklahoma State's struggling. They haven't found an offense to run against this matchup zone. It's forced... Williams to make outside jumpers. They're not getting anything inside. Houston and Pittman unavailable on most trips, so they're going to have to screen the wing people a little bit and settle for the jump shot. And from Temple's viewpoint, Billy, that really has been the story of the first half is that matchup zone defensive change. And it, 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 what he does is he controls the game from that end of the floor. Then they get Mark Bacon involved and usually end up with decent shots on the offense. So they, they get you both ways. Bacon was 5 of 7 from the floor in the first half. He's 5 of 10 so far, but still far better than a 6 for 29 he shot here as a freshman three years ago. The team lost to Duke. Temple, of course, that year was ranked number one. Nice. Houston. And Houston having difficulty finding the range as Mark Macon will be picked up. Picks up the foul. His second. Take a look at Cheney looking on. Johnny Pittman. Probably glad he's not going to the free throw line. Johnny Pittman only a 27% free throw shooter. You get that for showing up. <laughs> he doesn't enjoy it. But right now, they've done a nice job that strip Oklahoma State finding a hole. You've got to mix it up. You've got to show different sets. Blocked by Strickland. Block number four for Mark Strickland, and he shakes his head saying, hey, I'm here. Why are you bringing that near me? <laughs> well, they've got the Terminator. He's the devastator. He has been tough on those blocks. Houston out high. Somebody's got to be open. Not a good pass trying to throw it over the seven foot Johnny Pittman. This is Williams. John's got to look for shots. Houston, foul. Misses the shot. And he'll take a trip to the free throw line. Mark Strickland with the foul for the Temple Owls. That's his second personal. That's Temple's second team foul. 
they be they're, they're huddling there but you think well can they go pressure this team i think that would help temple the full i think they have to be patient with their defense and just keep mixing it up let houston pop the spots let them turn and dump to the corner it's confusing and obviously they have never seen a defense like this and mm -hmm. talking to their people and then in practice, you just can't show the same kind of exchanges and the same type of puzzles that Temple presents. Folks, at the 13.02 mark of the second half, this is the first free throw trip for Oklahoma State. And Houston drops in one of two. Byron Houston with only five points, and he averages 23 on the season. And JB, I know you weren't inferring that that was uh, the referees because of the foul. It's the long jump shot. The zone is not fouling. Oh, hey, I think the refs are doing mm -hmm. a good job. Yeah. Kill boy. All right, so Temple now 40 to 33, Oklahoma State, and most of you out there will take you back to that game shortly. Uh, what's going on out there? It's frustrating game for Houston. The Temple zone, very tough. Their shot blocking ability inside. He's only got five points. The average is 23, so Oklahoma State's going to have to up the Temple a little bit with a little pressure defense and maybe get it done on the perimeter because they can't get it done inside against Temple. Mike, let's catch everybody up to date on uh, some scores. Let's begin on the East region. North Carolina has advanced now. They beat Eastern Michigan 93 to 67. The last 12 minutes, Carolina outscored them. 32 to 8, and there you see the brackets. They'll go on to play the winner of Oklahoma State and Temple. The Big Ten is out of the tournament. Ohio State loses to St. John's 91 to 74. Robert Wardan had 21 points. That's a career high. There's the bracket there. St. John's, they'll play the winner of Connecticut and Duke. In men's Division II action now, North Alabama beat Virginia uh, Union 97 to 76. They will play Bridgeport, an overtime winner over Cal State Bakersfield 73 to 66. So it's Bridgeport and North Alabama tomorrow here on CBS. That's live, the men's Division II championship at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Then at 4 o'clock, it's our NCAA basketball regional finals preview show, 4 o'clock Eastern time. Mike Francesa and I will be here along with our band of experts. We'll have a round table and talk about some of the issues around the country. Then it is the regional finals, Kansas, Arkansas at 440, and Seton Hall and UNLV at 703. And the road to the final four will continue after this. Stay with us. Greg Kubek and Thomas Hill with 11 points each. Duke over Connecticut. Let's go to Andrea Joyce for a report. Well, Jim, there were some harsh words in the locker room for the Connecticut Huskies. Coach Jim Calhoun is angry with his team for coming out with virtually no defensive intensity, allowing naked shots to go completely uncontested. They'll try to work the ball more inside. The coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Semifinal Game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. ITT Corporation, building people's dreams. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, it doesn't get any better than this. From the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, Jim Nance and Billy Packer, along with Andrea Joyce, trying to find out the opponent for St. John's for the Midwest Final on Sunday. Duke leading over Connecticut, 44-27 at halftime. And Billy, we know UConn is not that efficient shooting the basketball. How in the world would they be able to come back from 17 down? Jim, I think we have a tough coach's decision right here, as was in the first game for Randy Ayers. The key for Connecticut all year long has been using their press to create their offense. They didn't want to take that chance because they thought Duke could beat it. Now they've got to go back to what got them here, I think, and that is go back to the press and take the chance that maybe they can turn Duke over a few times. Almost stole it away from Hurley, who was three for three in the first half of the floor. Hurley, that's significant because in last year's game against UConn, Hurley was 0 for 9 from the field. And has not been shooting well so far in the tournament again, but he's been controlling their offense nicely. Kubek traveled. Came to a jump stop, but then shuffled his feet. And you see UConn's first two opponents, 33% from the floor. Duke's going at 58% tonight. More trips to the free throw line. 75% from three-point land for the Blue Devils. And more points off turnovers. Chris Smith.
said two for ten in the first half. Draws the foul on Thomas Hill. Thomas Hill not only doing the job on the offensive end of the floor, but picking up the big assignment at guard Chris Smith, who you know is going to try to start this second half and get things rolling offensively. Look at Mike Krzyzewski. This is his 500th game as a head coach when you combine his career at Army and Duke. Game number 500. For Coach K, he's won 332, lost 167. Smith, uh, UConn now one for four from the line. But this has been one of their major problems all year long, Jim. As I said, just shooting a little bit over 60% as a team. Here, come, here comes the press. Not what you would call a real aggressive no, press. Straight man-to-man, -man, concerned about Hurley's ability to dribble. Leitner outside. He wanted to drive to the basket yep. so bad there. One of the lure sellers, and they are able to draw the foul. Leitner on Sellers. Sellers second in the first of the second half on the Huskies. And there was a case where Leitner had the one-on-one -on -one move, but there wasn't a clear out quick enough to give him a lane. Currently will inbound. Grant Hill did not score on that first half. Pass pass by Hurley. Great assist. You know, that's where two guys we know what you're thinking. You'd like a more competitive game, and with Duke leading 46 to 28, we will do just that and take you out in the East Region. Oh, Temple leads Oklahoma State 44 to 41. Here's JB, James Brown, and Bill Raftery. Counts to just past the ankles of Sellers, too. Now, late to finds Thomas Hill. Bumped away, and here comes Smith. Tough pass to Burrell. Great hustle by Christian Leitner, who knows when to get back down for it and when he can rest a little bit. They call on this young man to do an awful lot for Duke. Sometimes he does take those uh, rests where he just doesn't even cross half court. Or the priest and Hill using body on body inside. Double team on Chris Smith. Foul called on Kubek. Now second. A break for Thomas Hill that time. The call could have been made against him as well. Krzyzewski using Davis on the bench as his defensive stopper as Jim Calhoun has been on the gent on the bench hopefully to, to bring some offense when he comes in there Chris Smith the most valuable player last year in the Big East tournament uh, UConn won the Big East tournament and sealed the one seed in the East second team all Big East for the second year in a row kind of tough to nudge out the two guys ahead of in the backcourt on the Big East team Murdoch and Tahir uh, Murdoch of course with a great early start maybe many people thought he'd be the Big East player of the year the way he was doing by midseason Eight points for Chris Smith. Let's see if they come up and try to double team. Nice cross court pass. That's a pass that Connecticut will allow in their press. Three second violation as the ball was way outside near mid court. Leitner's called for the violation. Well, Christian Leitner really should have played a little decoy basketball down in the basket because the ball was so far outside you weren't going to be able to make an entry pass anyway. Michael stops his dribble. Sellers has Smith coming in. Hits him on the bounce. Pass. Rebound by Grant Hill. You like how high he got that one? In the air. Kubek led too much. Duke turns it right back. Now, Grant Hill's having a nightmare of a game. This young man has played very well down the stretch, but is not having a good game tonight. You see a sensational rebound here, and then he throws away the ball when it wasn't really necessary. Duke not off to a good start here in the second half offensively. Decrease. Well, that's a wall. He definitely walked on that one, but Sellers misses the lay-in. And a foul called against Duke. It's amazing how many steps Chris Smith got away with before he took his bounce step for the pass. It's on Thomas Hill, his second. You can see that Duke has not come out with the intensity they ended the first half with. Well, they had 15 minutes to think about uh, 
what they'd accomplish. They've got to get back mentally into this game. They're not there now. Just not enough offensive firepower. Thomas Hill. There's no place to go. Yep. Sloppy play picked up by Kubek. Duke was very, very fortunate on that occasion. Nice job by Mike Krzyzewski getting his team lined up to get in some kind of offensive set that gets off one decent shot. There's a steal. Not forced by Chris Smith. I think Connecticut can make a run on him here, Jim. Got to figure out a way to score, but Duke is not doing a job defensively. Burrell needs to start it, and there he yep. goes with the three. Excuse me, offensively. Got it down to 13. Duke hasn't shown any inclination to get things moving in the second half. Grant Hill looking for his first points. Offensive foul on Grant Hill. Mike Krzyzewski's going to have to take that young man out. That's four on him. Trying to go to the hoop. Sellers waiting on him. Hill's going to sit. Ryan Davis comes in for him. All right, UConn now has trimmed it to 13. Going into their 1 4 set. The priest too strong for Sellers and a little bit high, too. Jim, really not necessary to make that play right now. You're making a comeback, you really have to be careful with the ball. Four minutes deep into the second half, Duke has attempted one shot. One official shot from the floor, and the Blue Devils have turned it over six times. Gone into a low double box here. Hurley takes advantage of Smith slipping. Heichel on the rebound. Oh, and Hurley looked back. The priest walked. Was wide open. Now Hurley, upset with himself, looked back down court, and the priest just took off for an easy layup. Took off without the dribble. Yep. see Bobby Hurley taking the jumper. Lyman DePriest is going to go ahead and release long. Hurley has to go ahead with him. And you'll notice that he doesn't. He stands to watch his shot as he does and complains to the official. DePriest is wide open on the other end of the floor but walks before the layup. Here's Hurley now, sensing the double team. Gets it to McCaffrey. That's good trapping defense that time. McCaffrey had the shot and takes a harder one. McCaffrey makes it, however. Nice release on that shot. Billy McCaffrey averages 12 a game. There's his brother, an All-American football player at Stanford, well documented. Eddie McCaffrey will be going through the draft process of the NFL next month. Smith. That's a and a foul. It could yep. be a four-point play. Early got a piece of the arm. Wait a minute. Oh, they're going to call a foul against UConn. They're going to they score the basket and a foul on Burrell for pushing off. Now here we see the 2-2-1 full court pressure by Connecticut. Let's see if they stay in it. It's good. So no four-point opportunity. <laughs> got to come to the ball. He's hiding his time. Kubek will take it. Three-pointer for Kubek. What a game he's having. 14 for Kubek. Now away from the action again. Burrell and Davis exchanging words. These are two tough teams. And the, and the referees have been calling this game tight from the beginning. They've been extremely consistent. At the Silverdome, Pontiac, Michigan. Duke led by 17 at the half. The lead is now 15. Rick Kubin. 
has scored 14 tonight for the Blue Devils. Just had a foul a moment ago on Brian Davis. Of Duke is second. Here's an open man, Burrell underneath. Oh, what a shot. Great back screen by Connecticut. Severs on the follow. Excellent back screen play by Connecticut to get everything open on the inside. That's the first on Leitner. Amazing too, as active as he is, and as much as he has to play as their only true big man, not to get in foul trouble. Crowd of over 30,000 on hand tonight at the Silverdome. St. John's has already advanced here to the Midwest final on Sunday. They play the winner of this game. Ron Sellers behind the line and had a double double in that game against LSU. Here you see some of the key figures in this game especially the second column down three-point field goals duke is seven out of ten the sellers had a big game against uh, shaquille o'neal who still had his points and rebounds but sellers added 13 and 10 and then had 18 points against xavier here's leitner wide open a foul on sellers pretty hard to stop that entry pass down along the baseline to a guy like Leitner who's coming over to meet it so well. St. John's final was 91-74. Great game out of Robert Wardan today. And also Jason Buchanan. Jim, we think of Christian Leitner, we think about him in the NCAA tournament. Of course, he's played well regular season two throughout his career, but 24-9 and nine in that great Eastern final against Georgetown as a freshman. Then he was the East Regional actually MVP last year 24 against UCLA 23 against Connecticut so he has come to the front in NCAA tournament play well, you, you win your first game uh, like Louis Karnaseka did then you go in you handle a press conference and you come back out and do a little quick scouting please get that sweater dry clean <laughs> Louis had it on the whole time Duke goes to his zone. They've been following a little bit. Want to change things up. Heichel, who rarely shoots, missing Heichel. the jumper. Davis pushed him to the floor. No call. From the baseline, McCaffrey gets two players to commit. Oh, that will go over to Leitner. Bad pass, but great hands by Leitner. Leitner now posting up on Summers. A little too much traffic down there. And a foul called on Heichel. All right. This goes to show you, as a player, how you have to adjust to officiating. These officials are calling hand check, and the minute you put your hand on somebody, you saw the good evidence of it again right there as Hurley made his move. John Gwynn comes in for Coach Calhoun, replacing Steve Peichel. Peichel just cannot put any points on the board. He's been very good distributing the ball, but they need somebody to score. Leitner was looking for a cutter. Leitner playing if they double team McCaffrey and Leitner scores. 15 for him. Looks like Billy McCaffrey's getting a lot of confidence back, Jim. You know, he really saddled with an injury that should have slowed him down. Now he's picking things up. Ankle sprain after a sensational start to the year. Quinn going to the left as he likes it off the glass. You can count it when he can get motor, motor into his left. It's like my broadcast partner. <laughs> I like it going left. And now, 1-3-1 one, one zone by Connecticut. Leitner saying, I want to rest. Going to use some clock, let Christian Leitner rest. Ryan Davis leaving really open for a three. Back to the rim. Burrell way up for the rebound. We saw Grant Hill with a great rebound. Burrell did likewise. Win. Take the three. Soft goal. And they're within 12. 10 for Gwynn off the bench. Jim Calhoun trying to fire this team up. And they stay back in the 1-3-1. Davis. Jumper. Leitner. No foul call. Sellers was on his back, and it's off Leitner's hands. Now McCaffrey wide open on the side that time, and Davis when he made his drive. Let's see the next time down the floor if they don't try to hit him. Looks like Christian Leitner needs a blow. Crawford Palmer going to come in for him. This is the time for Connecticut to make their run. Crawford Palmer had one big play in the first half when he drew the charge during a UConn spurt. 
Duke gets out of the zone, goes back to the man to man. Hunter's going zone to rest late a little bit. Smith tough shot. over Hurley. It was very tough. Rebound pulled down by Thomas Hill. Good judgment there. McCaffrey was long. Davis gets by Smith. Now Burrell is on Hurley. Back man to man. Now Hurley have a tough job here because even if he beats him, Burrell can block him from the behind. I'm not sure Palmer was ready for that, but Davis alertly picks it up. A smart play by Hurley. He knew Burrell was coming from behind. If he'd gone up on his jump shot, Burrell could have taken it. Shot clock. Four on the shot clock. Hurley takes the jumper. Run down by Chris Smith. Went committed, had nowhere to go. They went right, Jim. was kicked. It'll be Connecticut's basketball when we return. 11-27 left in this game. Back here at the Pontiac Silverdome where Duke leads Connecticut by 12. I'm standing with one of the stars of the first game, St. John's Robert. Um, we're Dan, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about your poor sister. Tell me a little bit about what's going on this weekend. You get to come back and play on Sunday, but it's messing up your social uh, life. That's all right. Uh, my sister's getting married tomorrow, uh, on Saturday, actually, Saturday morning. And I'm not going to be able to be there, and I hope she understands. Now, way. you were supposed to stand up for the wedding. Who is going to fit into your tux? Oh, I don't know. I think my parents might have canceled the tux already. All right. I think she'll forgive you this time around. Back to you guys. All right, Andrea. This game has been now tightened up by the Huskies. John Gwynn with a three, and it's a single-digit lead for the Blue Devils. Nine-point lead. Jim, that goes back deep into the first half when Connecticut was as close as nine. Leitner back in, trying to get position inside. Good job by Sellers. Duke had led twice in this game by 18. Thomas Hill, baseline. Just as he started the game. Silky, smooth jumper. Chesky could not afford to leave Leitner on the bench. He probably wanted at least another minute. Thomas what Hill with the steal. Gets it over to McCaffrey on a save as well. Oh, and a Gwynn shot. just pushed McCaffrey to the floor. No call. Isn't that amazing that a little hand check is called the foul and a big push is completely overlooked. Good hustle by Gwynn. We'll see it here. Steal by Hill. Saves the ball. Gets it to McCaffrey. Look at this. Look at all the contact here. And there's a complete push-off. No call made. I thought that ball might have been out of bounds off McCaffrey, so they made up for the call. Gave it to Duke. Tim from an Oklahoma tight. Offensive. Davis trying to go one dribble too many. Second time he's done it in the half. Temple and Oklahoma State in the east. The winner will play North Carolina. And Cerulek checks in. You see Jim Calhoun figure and get another couple of minutes rest for Sellers so they can have a fresh Sellers for the last seven minutes against a somewhat tired Christian Layton. You know, Walker wanted it in a low post. Tough job here with Hill on him. Finds the seam to get it to Gwynn. It drops right down. What a block by Layton. The possession arrow belongs to the Huskies. You can see Gwynn gets so far inside. I think he was originally looking for the pass. Nothing else to do but try to hang. Puts it up in there. John Gwynn, the math of product. First one to play in the Big East. After all those outstanding teams Morgan Newton's had. I don't believe there's been another one either. You know, it's interesting. And there, Leitner called on the foul against Cerulek. That's two on Leitner. Jim, you being a football man, I understand the math of this year had 14 football players sign grants and aids in football to go on to college. Is that amazing? Wow. That is I wasn't aware of that. That's amazing. Lyman the Priest returns for Burrell. One and one situation now after the foul against Leitner. 
So Sarula will go to the line for the Huskies. You can you can read Jim Calhoun's mind right now. He puts Burrell down, puts Sellers down. I think he's getting ready for a, about a, a seven-minute mark, a big rush by his team. McCaffrey comes in, replacing Brian Davis. Watch the move by Sarula after he takes the basketball here on his free throw. He'll kind of wind it up. A lot of big guys have more motion than little guys. They shouldn't need much motion at all. Ten point Duke lead, 9.30 remaining. Connecticut stays man to man. Cyrillic on Leighton. Just trying to make him work hard for these couple of minutes he's in there. Walker came over to help out on the post up. Now. proven that he wants to get back to that final four. This is about the finest game he has played maybe in his career at Duke. He's had higher scoring games, but he's right on up there today in regard to his overall performance. Good rebounding, excellent defense, good, good decisions on the pass. He has 16 points. His career high was in the ACC final when Duke was demolished by Carolina. Kubek had 21 in his losing cause. Now he can add to his total here. Kubek, one of seven McDonald's All-American on his Duke lineup. Burrell. The shot. And that'll be three coming up for Burrell. Foul called against Thomas Hill. No, they're going to call it after the shot, I believe. So it will not be in the act of shooting. And Jim Calhoun has three fingers raised. He wants three. Wait, no, wait, it has to be three. I think I think the referee's confused right here. He was going to call it after the shot, which would have been a one and one. Now it's, it's got to be three. It's got to be three. He was going to call it after the shot. Jim Calhoun talked him into the fact saying it was part of the shot. And since he missed it, it's a three-point foul opportunity. Official was confused. Three. Three, man. Three. Left side of your screen, you'll see Burrell in three-point land. And certainly the foul in my estimation, what took place after the shot. I don't think he should be shooting any of them. Well, they would have been in a bonus in a one-on-one. Exactly. One. You had a one-on-one one opportunity. Temple in Oklahoma State. With one second remaining. There's got to be a mistake in that score, Jim. We haven't had a close game yet. <laughs> Can't be in the Sweet That's 16. Right. Oh. A lot of talking on the line. Burrell makes two out of three. It's an 11 point lead for Duke. Unable to pull away from the Huskies. Well, we haven't seen the big move by the Huskies yet. They're going to be a rested team for the last few minutes. Brand Hill is back in to the Blue Devils. Here from the corner, Kubek. Burrell way up in the air for the rebound, but it gets into Leitner's hands. There's Brand Hill. Blocked by Gwynn, but they call him on a foul. He's down on one knee, pleading his case. I thought it was a good block by Gwynn. He was right on the ball. His position was from behind, but let's see if he doesn't get all ball here. Hill going up. Oh, hard to tell on that one. You see, Chris Smith thought it was a good block. Grant Hill at last can get into the scoring column. Averages uh, 11 a game. Been in foul trouble throughout this one tonight. And that's why he has been scoreless until now. Well, it's kind of amazing that Duke is shooting a decent percentage in the second half. It's just the fact that they haven't gotten off many shots. We've turned the ball over a considerable number of times. Sellers and Cerula alternating. Sellers in now. Grant Hill with his first two. Duke leads by 13. 
largest lead was 18. At one time in this second half, the Huskies got within nine. Zellers comes back resting. You see, he looks so fresh. Chris Smith has it partially blocked. Up ahead to Leighton. Burrell can go up with him. Yes, sir. Burrell forced the missed shot. There's no question Scott Burrell was in position with his great speed to make that play. Hurley had a good read on the pass coming over on the wing and almost got a steal. We have seen Burrell do some extraordinary things with his quickness and leaping ability. And he was ready to take on anything Leitner had, even though Leitner had a lead on it. Crawford Palmer in for Leitner. Notice what Mike Krzyzewski did right there. I think a brilliant substitution. Leitner just had to make a long run, kind of thing that will exhaust the big man. He takes him out and sits him down right now. Temple in Oklahoma State in overtime in the East. There's Gwen, 3.5. Foul called. Kubek's having a huge night. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. Andrea Joyce is with us as well. The winner will play St. John's in the Midwest Final. Duke came out and nailed five three-pointers in a row at the start of this game. Well, five straight three attempts. And they have led throughout. And there's the bracket from the Midwest. Kubek at the line to shoot a one and one. He has 17 points and five rebounds. Got the start in the first round game against Northeast Louisiana after his uh, career high in that ACC final loss to Carolina. Now, Kubek has had some of his biggest games in losses at Duke. Duke 16 for 17 from the foul line. They have only attempted 11 field goals here in his second half. Because of eight turnovers, they haven't really been able to get it going. Look at that gash he's got in his eyes. We saw Jim Jackson with a cut in the first game tonight. One of two for Kubek. 14-point edge. Kubek on Sellers. They might be able to get something down low. Sellers fighting for position. Quinn won't wait for it. Sellers. Now it's Sarulek instead. They're taking a look at Kubek's eye. Yeah, he's really got a gash there. When you're having the kind of night he's having, Are you sure you okay? he probably doesn't even know that it's bleeding. He really has a cut. The timeout on the floor with 7.48 remaining. Number 32, Leighton. Duke, lead is a dozen. Take a look now at a replay as uh, Rick Kubek has that eye injury. Rod Sellers fighting for position with him. Well, you can see Kubek playing such an outstanding game tonight, wanting to stay right out there, and he still is. Mike Krzyzewski did not make the substitution of that timeout. And with 7.35 to go in this kind of lead, Duke opens it up without a postman. Leitner, beautiful play. Jump stop. You notice that they did not put Leitner in the low post. Therefore, there was an open court area for him. Temple with a five-point lead, two minutes to go in that overtime game. Sellers not a good ball handler without that far. But Kubek may reach in and steal it. Yep. Grand Hill went for the steal. Leaving Burrell open off the glass. 11 for Burrell. Oh, it, Leitner has hurt his elbow. I don't know what happened here. This would be a big blow for Duke. Foul called on the play on John Gwynn and uh, Leitner trying to stretch out that right arm. Now, you know, if he's got that right arm hurt, He's gonna, it looks like he's going to stand again. Let's see what Mike Krzyzewski is going to do. He might have just hit his crazy ball in a second. Looks like he's all right. When you play against a team like Connecticut or Duke, you're going to know physically you have been in a ball game. Kubek, Thomas Hill, Bobby Hurley, Brian Davis, and Leitner on the floor for Duke. Hurley not a real good free throw shooter for a man's going to have his hands on the ball a lot as this game winds down. Under seven minutes. <laughs> Excellent solid screen on Hurley to get that shot off. That was a two-pointer. It's a ten-point lead. Thirteen for Smith. 
Leitner driving. Oh, great first step by Leitner. Davis got to put it back up to get by. Davis and Burrell are so close to exchanging blows. They have, they have a couple of times had verbal confrontations. The, uh, I saw an elbow about to be just released. Memory of Stacy Ogman, Todd Day. Yep, you can just feel it yep. brewing. Well, how about Todd Day with a big game yesterday? Arkansas really on a roll now. Sellers now with four. That was tough. There were so many players uh, involved in that skirmish, and Sellers, unfortunately, the one picked up the foul. Two shots for Davis. Vocal leader, perhaps, of this team. Or I think one good thing about Duke is they have a lot of leaders. Well, and not the kind of guy that's going to back down to anybody, particularly on the defensive end of the floor. He's still mouthing off with Gwynn a little bit. Short. Oh, right. But that ball was coming short. Good follow. -up. See if they set another solid screen on Hurley. Win with Thomas Hill on him. Burrell drives. Oh, if it goes! Boy, that'd have been some shot. Foul is called on uh, Thomas Hill. Jim, we all know about Burrell's story of being the outstanding baseball pitcher that he is and the competitor that he is on, on the floor. Reminds me of another great basketball player who became one of the all-time great pitchers, is Bob Gibson. And he seems to have that same type of attitude. That, if he can pitch at all, you know that his temperament's going to be something on the mound. Thomas Hill with four. Grant Hill comes in now with four fouls. Burrell will be checking in with the Toronto Blue Jays. Around May the 20th, after the spring semester is over, played for St. Catharines of Ontario last year and probably will start out in A ball at the same spot. Just a 59% free throw shooter. about 10 minutes of action this game has been right at this same point well the reason for it is the defensive intensity in the part of all of these players they're very tough and they're just not letting you get any easy shots and that's on both ends of the floor here Smith pushing off as Hurley was driving outside they say and I think this is a good move by either team the rest of the way particularly Duke where the court is going to be opened up somewhat is to drive because they're calling the hand check so close Hurley will shoot a one and one and this lead is hovered around the 12 point mark seemingly the whole second half now they say Hurley shooting two was the 10th foul. 10th foul, right. Yeah, I, I thought it, well, we had it for nine at first. Number 21. Michael back in. Here's a guy talk about uh, offensive punch and amazing stories. The last time Steve Heichel scored in double figures, Billy, was the last game of his freshman year. It was the Big East tournament against Boston College. And not only did he score double figures, he scored 27. He hasn't had a double figure game since. Change of priorities. Well, plus that shoulder injury. Look at the Blue Devils fighting. Oh, there was Sellers going after Leitner. Good job by Grant Hill. Pulling off. Here's a good job by Leitner. He just surrounded him completely. Now Sellers going to go on to the pile up, and he goes right down on Leitner's face and then gives him some more. Boy, he's had a couple of shots in the face. How does an official not see that? That was, there were two shots to the head of Leitner. Bad job there. No call either. They, nope. It was a tie-up situation, and the arrow belonged to Duke. Leitner paid for that jump ball. Tough <laughs> situation. Who's handling the ball? Grand Hill on Burrell. Now, nobody on Hurley. DePriest can't handle Hurley. He ought to just keep it and drive on him. Good move by Bobby Hurley. Blew right by him. Oh, what a block. Sellers and DeFries combining. Quinn wants the three. Caffrey may have a hand on the Two-body. 
Everybody's down. Grant Hill may be hurt. Whoa, did he go down with Burrell. This game is really getting rough now. We have tremendous competitors on the part of both sides, but the officials better get this one under control. This was away from the action. Oh, you can see just an undercut. Hill goes down, hits right on his spine. Burrell takes a shot as well. He hit it right on his tailbone. Yep. Mike Krzyzewski. He's going to get hurt. Grand Hill's going to come out. The young man got popped in the nose this year. Missed some games. Had a hip pointer. Missed some games. And now comes down hard on his back. Michael returns for UConn. Jim, if you're Duke, you got to think a little bit now, starting to use this clock sum. You're into the uh, two-shot foul situation. Burrell with a three off the back of the rim. No place to go, McCaffrey. Get it back. Leitner called for it, and he got it. And now Hurley seems like he's limping out there right now. These teams are, are getting sore. Duke just using the clock. Look at who's the point man out here playing guard now. Christian Leighton. Such a good ball handler. Now, it's amazing. They didn't call hand checking. Well, they call, they do uh, call it, Billy, on no, Sellers. Sellers, you got to give him a tee. There it is. Excellent call by the official. About time. About time. Now, this is going to be a tough break for Connecticut. But it's about time that was called. Sellers called for the technical. Somewhat frustrated having to go out that far from the basket to guard Christian Leitner. He fouls out. You know, he fouled on the play before the technical. So what we have is a two-shot plus a two-shot technical plus the ball out of bounds now. The lead's already 14. And, a, and an excellent free throw shooter going on that line to get some rhythm here. Shoots the personals first. Long. Look at Sellers now. There's been words exchanged for the entire second half. One shot. Christian just turned his back on him. Smart thing to do. 17 points for Leighton. says, uh, step aside, big fella. I'll shoot the technical. Now, it would have been interesting if he had made the two and had a nice rhythm going. I wonder if Mike Krzyzewski would have let him on the line as opposed to bringing McCaffrey. I would have. Yeah. Oh, there's this. Three in a row by guys that shoot over 84%. This one's got to be good. Can I go back to my light theory? Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought at first uh, your theory, at least in the first game, you were light years ahead of the of the teams out there with the with the whole situation. Well, but the, pre the percentages here in this game have been well, we've I, been tracking that. I still think there's such a considerable difference on the two ends of the court. Spreading it out. Temple about to uh, knock out the three seed in the East. Rulick all over Leitner. Nice job by Bobby Hurley to come back to that ball. At 10 seconds, they'll want it in Hurley's hands. 20 on the shot clock now. 4.30 in the game. And a steal by the Priest. Picked up by Burrell. Offensive on Burrell. Wow. That was some play to get underneath him. I thought Burrell Position was established. The two Blue Devils, the two seed in the Midwest, four minutes, 20 seconds away from advancing to the Midwest final. Jim Calhoun, irate as they take away a basket by Scott Burrell. As he scored, but he was called for charging. There's been a technical foul call a moment ago as well on Rod Sellers of the Huskies. Here's a foul on Burrell, and he'll foul out with that one, Billy. And Jim, Jim Calhoun has got to take it easy right now. He's in the position to pick up another technical foul on Connecticut. One technical was called on Sellers after he had 
committed the foul on Leitner. Now Burrell will sit down. So Jim Calhoun loses two of the men he had hoped to have out there to go down the stretch. Burrell fouls out with 11 points, three rebounds, and three steals. He had tied the NCAA mark for steals in a game in the tournament. And the game against Xavier. Here's the, the technical that was called on Sellers for a few words exchanged. Well, they weren't really exchanged because Leitner didn't answer back. Now, here was no call on this one, Billy. Watch Sellers come in on Leitner. Yeah, First with the elbow. And he tries to go ahead and rough him up a time or two, and absolutely nothing was called on that play. Duke putting themselves in a solid position here. Now up 17, they go to the zone. And you know they're going to use some of the clock on the other end of the floor. That was a foul on teammates. Yeah, on teammates, Sorelli. Under four minutes. Really gets low to the ground on that dribble. McCaffrey says, why not? He no, you Don't want need it now. Exactly. You want to use the clock here. Wade dribbles it right off his own foot. Duke and St. John's headed for a rematch. They met last year in the second round, and Duke, of course, had advanced to that one. Now, Christian Leitner delivered the final blow last year against UConn, and Tonight, they're not going to need any last-second heroics against the Huskies. Grant Hill is back in, and he had a dangerous fall. Some of you were watching the Temple-Oklahoma State game. You didn't see it, but it's good to see the freshmen's back in there. He's had a rough, rough night, however, in this ball game. Fell on his tailbone. Now, Duke shooting over 50%. Terrell and Sellers have fouled out for UConn. Tremendous difference in free throw shooting. Michael for the three. His first points of the game. There was, Quinn was waiting for somebody to come up and help him double team, but nobody did. Nice reverse dribble by Hurley. Cyrillic fouling three, four, five times, and none of them fall. Look at Leitner. Christian Leitner is going to be a handful for Cyrillic out there at the top of the key. Cyrillic saying, hey, let me try some moves. Second big rebound Hill has captured tonight. Leitner and Robert Werdan uh, headed for a matchup on Sunday. Werdan coming off a career best effort tonight, leading St. John's past Ohio State. There will be some interesting matchups because what do you do with Billy Singleton as far as Duke is concerned? Low post power player. Be awful strong for a guy like Kubek to try to handle. A team a year ago when they met in the second round, Duke won at 75-71. There was a one of the score indicates. It was brought down in the last minute. Boy, you do not get any easy baskets here. Hill ruling on the foul. There's Sellers fouled out. Sitting next to Burrell, who has fouled out. That was actually called on Torreno Walker, his third. Leitner and Kubek sit down. Tremendous games on behalf of both of those fellas. So Rulick will sit, Billy. Mark Soar comes in. And Marty, Marty Clark in for Duke for the first time tonight. Antonio Lang saw some minutes earlier. He's back in. Just not Grant Hill's night. It really wasn't. The other thing interesting that, you know, with the one day, and, and, and I look around, Jim, at the teams that have advanced, the one day to get ready for a team now in the NCAA tournament. Seton Hall, one day to get ready for Vegas and the various things that they do. That'll be very interesting to see P.J. Carlismo's practice. Of course, we're not allowed to, but it'd be interesting to watch his practice to see what he's planning on doing in the matchup situation with Vegas. Some block, block by Grant Hill. And as it was getting away from him, he tried to bat it over to Hurley. Well, Mike, to Sh Mike Krzyzewski merely looks to the ceiling, wondering what's going on. <laughs> I'm looking it over at Mike right now. He doesn't want to smile, but he's shaking his head, saying, what in the world is the young man doing tonight? Because he's been playing so well of late. Three points and four turnovers for Hill tonight. And Gwen fades to his left and hits the three. 
Jim Calhoun was going to call a timeout and figured it uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Lentonio Lang. Walk. Yep. Never had it. Now the coverage tomorrow for the tournament. The road to the Final Four show will start it off at 4 Eastern, followed by Kansas and Arkansas. There's a situation, too. You start talking about matchup situations there. Arkansas wanted to, to run the full 40 minutes. Kansas wanted to play that half court with that great patient offense. Michael over to Gwynn. And Smith reached in and knocked it away from McCaffrey. Amazing how good a job Connecticut has done tonight, not allowing Duke to fast break. The Connecticut's problem was the fact that if they weren't going to pressure, they didn't score off their defense, and they haven't been able to score in a half-court offense. A little hug from Coach K for Hurley, and Clay Buckley, the senior, has come in, senior co-counter. Baseliner goes in for McCaffrey. Good decision there by Lang not to go ahead and touch that ball on the rim. Michael. And Grant Hill. Good bounce pass that time for McCaffrey and lays it in. When you talk about big picture, Billy, with the eight teams left, you got three of the one seeds remaining. One two seed. That's Duke. A couple of threes. Seton Hall in Kansas. And I'll tell you, if you're the University of North Carolina, trying to prepare with one day's notice for John Cheney's great matchup zone is tough. That's got to be your Cinderella team, the 10 seed in the East Temple. two teams, Arkansas and Kansas will be the first to book reservations for Indianapolis. Southeast Regional will be followed tomorrow by the West Final, UNLV and Seton Hall. Rematch of the 89 West Final when Seton Hall won it. They found Buckley. In a little different circumstances now, however, with what Seton Hall has in front of them facing Vegas. Yes, but uh, when is Vegas? The Vegas we saw all season play with such pride. And yeah, I would certainly agree with that. Yep, I, yep. I, they I, haven't been there in the tournament so right. far. That defensive intensity is not what uh, we have seen throughout the year from them. Not trying to fire up their team or anything, just making a statement on what we've seen. Steve Peichel, graduate student, came back this year. His career closes tonight. Of course, this young man's dad played in the final four or two. Jay Buckley. Oh, Grant, is, Grant Hill is doing the job here of late. A late going, a couple of steals. This thing is short one, the follow by Clark. McCaffrey bats it over. Win on the save. Smitty on the three. Underneath. Macklin. Scott Burrell will play baseball professionally this summer, but he says, I'll be back for my junior year because they have a terrific recruiting class. In fact, rated by the Chicago Tribune as the best out of the early signings in November. So he says, I want to come back and be a part of it. And you know, Jim, something very interesting about that recruiting class, they're not New England kids. Connecticut now going on a national basis shows what their program has been able to do with the great exposure they've had the last couple of years under Jim Calhoun. And those kids, uh, they've already signed, come from Arizona, Florida, Washington, Georgia, California. Yep. Crenshaw High School. Backflip. Score on the foul. And Duke doesn't even have to get it inbounds. That's it. Duke all the way in this one. By the way, in the Sweet 16, now I know what they mean by the Sweet 16. The eight games, the average margin of victory was 16. Oh, very nice. I like it. <laughs> Two close ones. Seton Hall in Arizona, Oklahoma State and Temple. It's St. John's and Duke Sunday. 
for the Midwest Regional Championship and the right to go to the Final Four. Duke, one game away from four straight and five out of six. The Chevrolet players of the game, John Gwynn for UConn and Greg Kubek for Duke. The check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each school's general scholarship fund. Billy, I'll see you on Sunday. Right now, let's send it back to Pat O'Brien and Mike Francesa. All right, so Greg Kubek plays the game of his career. He wants to go again to the Final Four badly, Mike Francesa. What's your overall picture now? We're in the Elite Eight. Elite Eight, you have two Big East, two ACC, a Big Eight, an SWC, an Atlantic 10, and one very Big West, UNLV. Very Big West. Uh, let's uh, keep the basketball coming at you with another wave of action tomorrow afternoon. We'll start your sports viewing day at 2 o'clock Eastern time with the NCAA Men's Division II Basketball Championship, North Alabama.